Hey, uh, Rob Watson here. It's Thursday the 30th of July and the weather has changed. Um, it's actually quite hot. I've just walked to Aylston Meadows. Sorry, I'll wipe some, wipe some sweat away from my, uh, from my brow. Um, yeah, it's been miserable the last couple of weeks. There's hardly been any sunshine. Uh, it's been cloudy and uh, quite frustrating because it's been co cold. You want to kind of sit out and relax. Uh, thinking it's summertime, it's the end of July, and it, it's you look at uh, news reports from and weather reports from across Europe, and they're basking in 30 degrees heat, uh, continental Europe. But we keep getting these um, low pressure areas drifting in off the North Atlantic and bringing cold and rain uh, and, and lots and lots of clouds. So we've got something like two or three days. Uh, <laughs> ahead of us where the the sun is out uh, so I thought I'd make the most of it an early start it's kind of about quarter to ten at the moment um, and I thought I'd just have a walk around uh, and kind of have a chat about um, uh, issues uh, you know we're coming out of the lockdown finally the the news will be announced later about the Leicester lockdown and whether it will at what form it will continue I think the shops are starting to open again now uh, which is which is nice to see some life edging back into the city and people kind of finding some sense of interaction with each other. Um, and it, it really does raise some thoughts about how we manage and deal and prepare ourselves to deal with this kind of thing in the future. Uh, we're very underprepared in terms of dealing with not just the physical uh, and, and you know, the 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 health issues in terms of a physical sense of dealing with it, you know, inoculations and wearing masks and, and those kind of things. But the, the, the mental uh, side uh, part to this, the, the inner part of this is very challenging. And um, we, we don't really address this on a symbolic level. Uh, so one of the things I've uh, started to, to do and think about is you know, allowing yourself time to be creative and to find moments. And I'm, I'm really not very good at this. I kind of live in a world which is uh, uh, very functional. You know, very often it's about uh, um, meeting deadlines. It's about completing tasks. It's about, you know, a accumulating information and repurposing that information, refunctioning information. And it's not really about creating the space where we can find joy. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, kind of, I enjoy my photography. And, you know, if, if you've seen any on Instagram or on, on, on the gallery on my website, um, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not particularly, I don't think it's particularly good. And I also don't think it's um, um, as good it, as it could be, but I enjoy, um, just kind of not thinking about it too much. If I have to think about my photography, I do it on a very instinctual level. If I have to think about it, it's kind of too contrived. And I like the process of letting things, just capturing things that kind of instinctively catch your eye, that you're not really thinking about, that you're not given a great deal of uh, thought to, because that somehow um, generates a greater sense of, um, when you look back at things over time, you lose that immediate connection of why it was taken and the image stands more on its own two feet um, and you don't really need to explain them. So there's something comes out of it from a kind of a, a deeper level. And as we, you know, the function that we've kind of least prepared for and that we're least able to work with is that search for meaning. You know, we, we search for um, responses in a transactional way. You know, we're very, uh, you know, we, we like to tick things off. To manage our sense of self, our well-being, it's kind of almost like, yes, I've done my 5K run. Yes, I've meditated. Yes, I've read an inspirational uh, quote for the day. Uh, yes, I've connected with some uh, other people within my uh, online network. But that doesn't tell us anything about the inner journey that we all uh, have to um, engage with and that we're thinking through in terms of our growth as individuals as um, that kind of we use the language uh, spiritually if you like um, and that sense inside us that there's something more meaningful than we would get from simply walking around the shops and simply buying things and, uh, and that's a big 
pull uh, in our lives. You know, I, I find satisfaction from objects and well-designed objects and I find satisfaction from being scornful and dismissive of badly what I consider to be badly designed objects, but it's superficial and it kind of, um, it, it doesn't create anything lasting. It's kind of artificial. It can be disposed of quite quickly. Whereas the enduring things that we might wish to remain a, a part of of the, or, or is nature and the the the, nat, the what we might loosely describe as the natural world around us and living in an urban environment that's quite difficult to achieve uh, because you're bombarded there's that sensory bombardment about cars you know you have to the british streets are, 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 the the speed limits are geared towards you know the cars what's the what's efficient for cars not what's suitable for people people's mental well-being so it's it's kind of you know finding space and finding finding peace and solitude away from um you know, things which are uh uh out to bombard us with information hello so it's uh, so getting out somewhere like this is 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 really kind of useful um it's uh, it's good to be able to it, it's in the heart of Leicester and it's it's largely ignored <laughs> it's not very you know it's it's got a it's it's hidden away um uh, but it does have its you know it's it, it's quite na quite um loosely managed so it's um it's not a, a park in that sense it's a recreational space where you can come and you can wander um and you can get lost in the woodland and the the fields and it's got this kind of it, it really is a kind of quite natural space literally in the heart of the city you know it's kind of sandwiched it's along the river um the river saw so it's got um uh, it's a floodplain so they can't really build on it and if there's any you know um efforts to put roads through it and things like that they're strongly resisted by people because it is a a key asset i think for the city it's ailston is just over that side and narborough road is just over that side which goes down to foss park uh, so it goes through the south uh, cuts through the south of the city uh, and there's a kind of natural divider and i think that you know it's it's, it's maintaining that is important and in a way it's a it's a metaphor for you know our our sense of self as well we need a place in within us that we can go and wander that we can get away from the pressures of being organized the pressures of being um fixed in the patterns of what we do mentally you know we have a routine and we're expected to live up to our our role uh, which is to fulfill certain functions as you know kind of task-based functions whereas actually you know it really might be more useful to, to to put all of that aside and see what emerges from mental wandering and kind of i'm trying to look at things like jung jung's uh, model of active imagination i don't know very much about it at the moment but it's a it's an idea that rather than a, a kind of therapeutic way of connecting reconnecting with your unconscious um is to follow the images that come with your dreams and to look for where they might lead us and have a dialogue and a conversation with us and express that in ways which are um aren't planned but see where they go and, and it you know it's not dream analysis in the sense that you have particular meanings that you ascribe to particular things so it's, it's certainly not freudian so you're not repressing anything and if anything Jung argued that the dreams uh, that we have are trying to point us in the direction for wholeness and fulfillment if only we're attuned to them and we listen to them so the active imagination is um is exactly that it's it's being active in the way that we imagine what our uh, requirements might be uh in order to to, to live that fulfilled life and to to be some someone who is uh, satisfied maybe not satisfied might, might be the wrong word but someone who is um at peace i suppose and and the pandemic has really challenged our sense of that it's really thrust us into a a, a social collective situation where dissatisfaction is not far away from the surface and we're kind of trying to hold on to some kind of sense of 
order um, and maybe that's the wrong thing to do maybe what we need to do is rather than throwing ourselves into violent abandonment which you know is kind of fairly common when you're reading things in some of the newspapers but to actually consider creative abandonment and to look at different ways that we can um, express ourselves and express our anxieties and express our hopes and express the full range of our emotions but in a creative way which can be shared um, so things like common access to music you know we're denied that at the moment you know you can't go to a music festival and listen uh, to, to, to bands and have that emotional expression of collective solidarity with people through recognition of, of, of music whether it's you know, classical music or pop music or rock music. Um, so that's absent for the moment. And I think doing these things on social media is not enough. You know, there's some great things uh, uh, come up on social media uh, for shared experience of listening. There's, there's Tim, oh, what's his name? Tim Parker from, um, oh, what's the band? I can't remember the name of the band. He's a um, uh, uh, Manchester band. And he does Tim's listening party on Twitter where people get together, listen to an album at the same time and tweet about it. And it usually involves, you know, somebody who's involved in the creation, the, 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 the musicians, uh, the, the, the performers, uh, the artists who created these albums. And it's a collective experience, but it's not. I don't think it's enough to do it behind from a screen. I think we do need to find a way to do this in, in, as, you know, in co-presence. We need to be together. We are social beings. Uh, and our search for meaning is, um, is a social activity. It's not something to be compartmentalised on Facebook. Um, you know, we need to be talking with one another. I find one of the, the advantages that I've got, I've discovered of the podcasting process that I do is that it is a co-presence, it's a telepresence. You can either do it through audio or video with something like Zoom, I use clean feed uh, for the podcast. And that gives you that, just that little bit extra rather than doing it through text. And I'm kind of, I'm not very, one of those people who's very confident with phone calls. I don't, you know, I'm, a, I'm an introvert. I don't like it when my phone goes. I, I'm supposed to answer it and I'm, I'm, I'm not usually prepared to because uh, it, it implies that you're going to be asked a whole load of things that you don't want to do or you don't want to think about. And it's like, you know, you pick up the phone and it can take you in a completely different direction than what you'd planned for your, your day or time. Either whether it could be positive or negative, it's a disruptive process. But actually spending time listening to one, one another and talking and discussing things is that sense of enrichment. And we do have those techniques and tools and we're, many of us are craving that ability to articulate our thoughts and listen to one another. And I think that key is listening and the key is being attuned to uh, what uh, we might be expressing on a surface level is not what we necessarily mean on that deeper symbolic level. Um, so getting out, having conversations, you know, I crave my time in coffee shops. Um, and so maybe finding a suitable alternative to that would be a useful thing to do at some point. Um, anyway, I've been wittering on. Uh, if uh, I'll try and again, as the weather allows, if I'm not feeling too depressed with the, with with, with the blooming clouds uh, I'll try and get out and do some more of these uh, these vlogs uh, if you want to get in touch with me I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter uh, just look for Rob W Media the website is uh, robwatsonmedia.net um, I do have a Patreon page. Um, I'm always, always willing to, to you know, kind of uh, follow people on their Patreon page. And if you follow me on mine, uh, and you know, the occasional cup of coffee just to, to offset uh, some of the, uh, the, the the costs, if you like, of running a blog. Uh, and actually, it's, it's just a thought before I kind of finish off is is I really need to repurpose and rethink what I do with my blog. Um, because I'm not, it's not about anything at the moment. It's kind of, it's kind of like uh, uh, infrequent. I'm not really using it to shape a story. Uh, and I think that would be a good thing for me to be able to do, to, to, to use it as a, in a purposeful way to tell a particular story. But I'm just trying to search uh, what that might be, but not about the process itself. So not about doing blogging or vlogging uh, and not about 
uh, making something, but actually about something itself. And that's something that's a, 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 a spot that, you know, a kind of a part of my development that I need to have that kind of draw on my interests and talk about them and tell those stories about that. So anyway, I've uh, been chatting a long time and I'll speak to you at some point soon.